Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is part two of Tottenham Transfer Talk with football journalist Greg Stobart. You still okay, Greg? I'm very okay. Absolutely nailed it in part one. Make sure you check that out. That was all about the potential buys that Spurs might make this January in a couple of weeks' time. Now we're going to talk about the potential outs from the club. Of course, going into any season, you can only have 25 senior players in the squad. There are talks and rumours about a few of those leaving. So let's start with the one that seems to be on everyone's lips the most, Andros Townsend. Now, obviously, with Andros had his little falling out with the fitness coach. I think that really just sums up how frustrated he must be at the moment, knowing that his kind of playing for England at the Euros chances are dwindling. A uh, few clubs have been interested in him from what I've heard. How much truth is there in him possibly leaving, do you think? And if so, where would you see him going? I think he'll leave. There's a lot of truth in that. Tottenham refused to sell him in the summer. They valued him way too highly and he was a big part of Pochettino's plans. Any Tottenham fan will tell you now it's no great loss mm -hmm. if he leaves now. He's not played since October, not been in the squad. And like you said, he really wants to play. He's Hodgson's boy. Yeah. Roy Hodgson loves him, but he's saying you've got to play. So uh, I'd expect a loan move. I think Tottenham will price him out. He's, they want £14, £15 million pounds for a player who's not even getting in the matchday squad. Do you know what, though? I know that sounds ridiculous, but I have to say, um, England internationals, in terms of being able to get one, uh, to buy one, that's at a premium. You know, 14, 15 million pounds for an England national is pretty low. I mean, I know he's not playing much for his club, but when Roy brings him on, he seems to play him in a lot more central position and he does score for England. And he scored for QPR when he was on loan there. I know? think it's four or five million too much for a permanent deal, which is why I think he'll end up going on loan. Yeah. Um, you've got the teams down at the bottom, they're the ones who want him, uh, particularly Aston Villa and Newcastle. Mm -hmm. I think he'd do a good job for either of them. He knows he can go there and play every week. And you never know, he might go there on loan for six months months, prove himself and come back into Pochettino's plans, but yeah. I'd be gobsmacked if he's still at Tottenham on February 1st. Okay, so that seems pretty positive, guys. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do you want Andros to stay or is that a good idea? Six months away on a loan again, maybe he gets his confidence back up, his belief and he comes back next season a different player or we end up selling him for 10 million quid. Uh, we're going to go on to, obviously, the... Uh, the devil incarnate after that performance in the League Cup against Arsenal, Federico Fazio. Interesting one for me, Federico Fazio, because he was bought uh, when Pochettino had joined the club. Uh, it just strikes me as so bizarre that we'd got rid of Michael Dawson, presumably as a result of his lack of pace, and then brought in Fazio, who's slower, as far as I can tell, <laughs> the slowest defender I've ever seen at Spurs. Um, but lots of rumours that he might be going back to Seville. Yeah, and you would have thought that he might be close with Pochettino, so they might have some sort of relationship, but apparently they don't even talk because as well. Because they're both Argentinian. Yeah, yeah, but, right. and he signed him, but they don't even talk either. So. I wouldn't talk to him <laughs> yeah, either yeah. after, honestly, yeah. he actually it's his gave one two assists for yeah. those goals. It was his only appearance this season, wasn't yeah. it? I don't, he not even been on the bench for the Monaco game. What I like about him is, you know, he's obviously aggressive. You know, we've seen clips of him giving uh, Diego Costa a little uh, rabbit punch before. He, he knows his stuff, but in the Premier League, if you're playing a high line and a pressing game, you can't have someone as slow as that. And, yeah. and I think all the virals come in this season. He's not like rapier-like pace, but he, he's got enough pace to do that job and cover Jan Vertonghen. Fazio just can't yeah. do that. He's just not a Premier League footballer. I remember when he got absolutely destroyed by Sergio Aguero last year yeah. at the Etihad, and that's just classic Fazio. He's just, like you said, not quick enough. Um, I don't know anything about where he might be going, but suffice to say, he will be leaving if they can possibly get rid of him. Yeah. Um, they wanted five million in the summer. I imagine it might even be a bit less now. They're going to have to take a did bit. We, what did we end up paying for him? Like 10? Eight, eight million. Eight million. Eight million pounds. Um, West Brom wanted him in summer really close, but it fell apart on personal terms. So maybe if they're still down there, they might have another look. But He I does think, strike me as a Tony Pulis guy. Yeah, he will. Yeah, yeah, well, aggressive like you said, he doesn't, you don't need to be quick if you play for Tony Pulis. No, you can just sit on the edge of the box deep. and head it clear. So. Yeah, no, I think, that, I think if we could get anywhere near five million for him, that would be good. Um, interesting about these, you know, we think it looks like Townsend and Fazio will end up going. Will we try and replace those players? Do you think uh, in terms no. of getting another defender in or will Cameron Carter-Vickers, you think, come up from well, the... He's highly academy, rated, yeah. Carter-Vickers, and they're not playing anyway. No. N none of these guys are playing anyway. You've still, Kevin Wimmer's only... He's playing few, in the Europa yeah, League. Yeah, he's playing a bit too. in the Europa League. When he looks good, actually, Wimmer. Yeah, like exactly. So there's a chance for him to... Um, I don't think they'll look to replace him. Pochettino's shown that he'll look to the youth team. I yeah. think they're probably better players than Fazio in the youth team. Yeah. And, that's the way they'll go. Okay, and one more thing we have to end on, unfortunately, because it's still in the papers all the time, uh, as unrealistic as I think this is. Uh, it's said today in the papers that Harry Kane is interesting Inter now to go along with the uh, constant rumours of Manchester United being interested in him. You kind of have a slightly different feeling to me. I feel like it's never going to happen, but you think maybe United may look, look for some kind of marquee signing over the next few years, and if they can't get a Bale or a Ronaldo, they might go for Harry. Yeah, it's not going to happen anytime soon, probably not even next summer, and all Tottenham fans hope it doesn't. 
But Man United really wanted him last summer. Mm. Like they would have spent £50 million pounds on Harry Kane yeah. and Tottenham said no. And if in a couple of years' time Tottenham are still fifth, sixth, Europa League and Man United are in the Champions League every week and offering to treble his wages, yeah. I'm not, it might happen one day because they're not going to sign Cristiano Ronaldo or Neymar and some of these players that they want. Yeah. Um, I think he's happy, he's said he's happy, he's the symbol of the team. Yeah. Tottenham love him, Daniel Levy loves him, Pochettino loves him and he signed a new contract in February and I think he'll probably sign another one just to be rewarded for the way he's played since he broke into the team. Yeah, I've got to say, I think he signed three or four new contracts yeah, last season. Yeah, he's done well. But Spurs it's, are pretty it's, good at that. It's the same tactic that Gareth Bale's agents did. I think he signed three new con three contracts in three years before he left yeah. and Tottenham were trying to get him to sign another one this summer. Yeah, but it worked for Spurs as well because we ended up getting yeah. 85 million. Yeah, it's good, him, you, so reward, you, re you reward strong performances and I yeah. don't think anyone see a problem with that. Absolutely, one, one more thing I think will be interesting. Lots of rumours that Pep Guardiola is going to leave Bayern and maybe he's interested in taking over at Man United. That might well mean that Man United become interested in a whole different type of player. Yeah, very true. Harry Kane is not a, he's not a Pep Guardiola player. Well, is he really. that dissimilar to Lewandowski? I know uh, what you're saying. Lewandowski is a bit more on the, on the yeah, final Yeah, he's man, a classic number nine. But yeah, I mean, you think of Guardiola, you think of very technical players, quick movement, yeah. sharp, maybe a bit smaller and quicker. Yeah. Um, so maybe we should hope that... Things, on, yeah, things over change in football very quickly. Greg, thank you so much for coming. Come in again, make oh. sure you've got very good insight. Uh, gives us a little bit more than we know and what we can read in the papers alone. Guys, let us know what you thought of Tottenham Transfer Talk in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. Cheers, Greg. Cheers, Sweet. Mate. <laughs> mm -hmm.